I just pulled up to Sovrana's and it's raining cats and dogs. I gotta get in there, I gotta get an Italian sub. I gotta see what all the hype is about. And we're getting into deep analysis on this one, so we're gonna run and gun, we're gonna go inside, we're gonna order a sub, and then we'll break it down in the home studio. And this is gonna be an analysis you're really gonna love. And that's starting right now. Now, interestingly, Sovrana's was never really on my radar until over this summer when they were on One Bite Pizza reviews. So we'll see, maybe there's gonna be more that I could pick up here that I gotta check out. But the main mission is Italian sub. We gotta see what goes into it, how good it is, and if the popular opinion is right on it. In order to do that, we have to analyze it. So let's go see what they got. So this place, Sovrana, is definitely really interesting. Inside is like a shrine to Padre Pio. If you're not familiar with Padre Pio, it's a face that you'll see in New York City quite a lot. He's like a modern saint. In the 70s and 80s, people used to flock to him because he would have healing powers. And apparently at some point, there was some stigmata that he had. I don't want to derail this with religious mythology, <laughs> but it was really interesting to see that. The other thing, the Italian sub here was $9, which I've never seen an Italian sub for under $10 here in probably five or six years. And they put prosciutto on it. Walking out, I felt like I was carrying like a really, really heavy package. So let's dig into it. Let's see what we got and let's see how it tastes. You can see here, there's a little bit of flaw, but I'm actually not gonna get on them too hard about that. We're gonna talk about the toppings on this sandwich, kind of how it relates to another sandwich we had here recently as well. The raw white onion is one of those things that's kind of a really, really strong smell, and I think perfect for an Italian sub. And I'll say, as far as how the cold cuts are sliced, just on first impression, I would say it's masterfully sliced, including the provolone cheese, which most places around here give you like a thick slab. This is nice and thin, so I can't wait to try this. Anyway, let's dig right in. This is the, the sliced lettuce business. Making a mess. The one thing I gotta give these guys is the bread they use. It's a cut above what everybody else uses in the area. This thing is really, it's dripping like crazy. Definitely a lot to break down in this one. I'm definitely mistaken when it comes to what's actually on the sandwich. It seemed like they listed out their Italian sub having prosciutto. This has boiled ham, nothing wrong with that, but there's also a layer of ham capicolo and Genoa salami. I would actually say so far, in terms of Italian subs I've had in this area, this is probably the most akin to what you would find downstate or in New Jersey, where it's kind of just simple ham salami provolone. They add the ham capicolo, which kind of levels it up a little bit. But the major flaw here is the romaine lettuce because it's kind of dangling off, it kind of doesn't really do the sandwich justice. But I would say the bread makes up for it, as does the use of that sliced white onion. And they are not shy with the onion at all. Where this is also a little bit lacking, there's definitely an oil and vinegar dressing because it's dripping all over my pants. <laughs> so I can tell you that. But um, there's not a lot of herbs. And a lot of times in these Italian subs, you'll taste some herbs. It's not a lot of, a lot of that going on. So it kind of leaves the meats to kind of play their own game here. And I think I actually like that. Sometimes it gets overpowered with oregano and here it definitely doesn't. Let's get back to the home studio and break down that Italian sub even more. We're gonna talk about the merits to the different components, bread, meat, toppings, and get into some technical details about why this is such an amazing experience and also what really could be improved. And I'll preface with, I don't think these guys are looking for feedback. I think they're set in their ways. I think they're gonna do what they're gonna do. And that's definitely one of those things where it's like, okay, you guys have been here for many years. What you're doing obviously works. But the reason why we're doing this is to bring awareness and to kind of get everybody to think critically about what they're eating so that they understand why it is that they like the things that they like and why a venerable sandwich like this, even with all the feedback I give it, is a pretty incredible historic thing. Now the one thing I found really confusing about Zvorana's, when I ordered an Italian mix, the guy seemed to know exactly what I wanted, but then when I actually panned over to look at the menu, it seems there's a couple of different options and maybe I didn't get the Italian sub that's listed on their menu there, maybe I got a different type of Italian sub, because as I noted in the car, instead of prosciutto, which the menu advertises for the $9 sub, I ended up with boiled ham. Now I actually prefer boiled ham, so there's no problem there, although prosciutto is a more expensive meat, right? But the other thing I noticed on there is that there's a hot Italian lover's mix. They didn't ask me to specify which one I wanted and that kind of leaves me with a lot of faith for what they were doing But in the end we got exactly what I had in mind So I guess this guy's been doing it for a long time So he knows what people want when they come in But the menu did confuse me a little bit Another thing I'll mention about the menu is it seems more heavily skewed toward pizza And this is definitely a shop that services the neighborhood actually while I was there a handful of people came in Some police officers other people who work locally who are placing multiple orders So you can tell they kind of got used to just being in the neighborhood there there were already 
pizzas to sell by the slice on the counter. And I actually walked in a couple of minutes before they were scheduled to open. As soon as I saw the light, I had to go in. So when I unwrapped it, I was totally expecting to see the same Prinzo's roll as I see everywhere locally. And I was surprised when I saw something that appeared a little bit toastier as far as the color. But as soon as I put my hand on that sub, I knew that it was being done properly for the most part. There's a few things here we have to dig into that weren't exactly perfect. As far as the bread, what they use is perfect. perfect. And I would even venture to say they're probably making this in house because of the fact they're churning out pizzas. And as far as what the bread is, an Italian sub should be made on a bread that's got a good amount of crust and airiness to it, but also has a good amount of softness on the outside. This bread totally delivered on that. And I would say as far as like a homemade Italian sub in the area, probably one of the best breads I've seen locally to the capital region. So that was a nice touch. Next, let's get into the price here. $9, a total bargain. Now I'm not saying this because I think they should do it right away, but they should reconsider that price because their competitors and a lot of other places in the area are charging pretty close to $15 for a sub of the same size, along with the similar quality meats. Just putting that out there, you gotta know what you're worth, and this is definitely worth more than $9. That said, I have no problem paying $9 for a sub like this, and to that effect, it definitely over delivered as far as the price point. Now this is assembled the way I'm actually used to doing it, where you put your lettuce and tomato on the sandwich, then you hit it with your oil and vinegar on both sides of the bread before you top it with the meats and then the cheese on top. This was a very welcome assembly because honestly, it's been a really long time since I've seen it done this way. We're gonna leave the elephant in the room for last. And if you saw the Ranganese video, you already know what I'm talking about. But as far as the assembly, they start with boiled ham, then ham capicola, then the sliced salami, then the provolone cheese. Now here's what's interesting. When I saw him go over to the side to make the sandwich, he was pulling the meats out of the deli case and there was definitely like a little cooler station there. I didn't see a slicer, but it seemed like maybe he was slicing the meats to order. There was a lot of things kind of covering up the back there and I wasn't really trying to intrude on what they were doing. I used to hate when customers would do that. So even the fact that I took a couple little clips of the menus and what they have in the shop there, that's definitely a little bit outside of my comfort zone as far as going to a place like this. But one thing I have to say up front, just panning around the restaurant, they had a soda case and they had their little deli area. Not a whole lot in terms of imports. In fact, I don't think I saw any imports there. Just some cookies, some pizza and some sandwiches and it looks like they have hot food to go as well. So that said, this is definitely like a quick service type delicatessen, not really like an import shop like Ranganese, which I mentioned we did last time. It's hard to discern whether this is really trying to be a deli or a pizzeria. I think that's up to the individual. But the assembly of the meats is perfect. I love that kind of order of operations where you got your hams, then your salamis, then your cheese. Sometimes when you put salamis up against each other, they kind of compete a little bit like we learned about in the Jersey Mike's video. And we talked a little bit in the Ranganese video. I don't know what it is about the places around here, but they all insist on putting ham capicola on a sandwich in addition to boiled ham. To me, it's only a little bit of a marginal increase in flavor, so it's fine. I don't see really what it adds as far as like flavor to the sandwich. I guess in terms of the texture, boiled ham ends up being a little bit softer than ham capicola. So I guess it gives you a few more textures to chew through, which is fine. And again, not complaining at all. How silly would I have to be to complain about having more types of meats on the sandwich? But just like the Ranganese, here we go again with the sliced romaine lettuce and I don't get it. In this case here, it actually ends up being a fatal flaw because it makes it such that you can't manage it with one hand. Everything just kind of slips around, especially since you have so much white onion on this sandwich. Not complaining about the volume of stuff that's on the sub, just the whole purpose of the lettuce is to provide a crunchy layer to break up all the soft meats with the soft bread. And as far as romaine lettuce, unless you're eating the heart down the middle of it, you're not really getting that. So I don't really understand it. And I talked about that in depth in the Ranganese video. So if you want to hear me rant about that even further, it's kind of a carbon copy of the same criticism I have for this sub here at Sforana's. Again, not bad. It just doesn't taste like anything. The locals here seem to love just leaves of romaine lettuce on their Italian subs, but honestly, I really just don't get it. Even though I have assimilated into being a local here, it's not my thing. I'm a thinly sliced iceberg guy all the way, especially on an Italian sub. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit it with a like and make sure you're subscribed if you enjoy videos like this. I'm breaking down all kinds of foods, especially Italian subs lately, from the really popular local places to the chains. So you're not gonna wanna miss any of the new videos when they're published. And if you missed that Ranganese video, I'm gonna link you to a playlist right here that has all the Italian subs. You're not gonna wanna miss it. Have an amazing day and I'll see you in the next video.